Hello and welcome to this really quick introduction to Python and building games with Python. I just wanted to start out by giving you a really quick introduction to essentially what it means to write a game, what it means to write code. There's a couple of re uh, prerequisites we're going to need to get started with this. Um, you're going to need to follow tutorials online to get this working. So firstly we've got um, a IDE, so you could use something like Spider or PyCharm. Um, I've gone with VS Code here, or um, Code for Linux, which is built by the Visual Studio Microsoft team. The other thing you're going to need installed is a version of Python. If you install like PyCharm or Spider, then you might get one bundled. Um, I think it's better if you just go to the Python website. So if we go to python.org, you'll see there's a download option. Um, and I would just download the latest version of Python for whatever your computer is and hopefully you should be able to get it up and running. So this is VS Code and as we can see I've gone to right click and I've created a new file called game.py and in order to run this I'm going to need a new terminal output which is this um, and let's just get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import, import a library called turtle we're going to import this as t, and if I say something like t.forward by 100, then I run this by calling python game.py. In fact, I need to cd into this folder, python game.py. Uh, we can see that it has um, it has drawn a line on the screen. And the reason I've got input here is because it's just going to wait for keyboard input um, like that before the code stops running. Uh, whereas if I don't have this, uh, or I could do, for example, t.exit on click, I think, and it's going to wait for me to click before it exits that. Okay, so as we can see, we've started with uh, our turtle and it's gone forward by 100. Now, the way I like to think about this turtle is if you were looking down on your own head, then the way in which your eyes are facing are the way in which the arrow is pointing. So we can do other things with our turtle. For example, tell it to turn right. And if we told our turtle to turn right by 90 degrees, we can say we've gone 100 forward and then we turned right by 90 degrees. And we know that in order to draw a square, we need to move forward four times and each time we move forward, we need to turn right. And there you go, we now have a square, okay? And if we wanted to uh, simplify this down a bit, we can use something called a loop. So if I take all of this code and I tab it in, I can say for i in range four, and what this will do is this will do something called iteration and it will do it four times so similar to the previous code we had I've now said do this four times instead of typing it out four times and we can see we get the same result as we had before now to simplify this even further um, I could so to do something new with this for example I could do t dot begin fill um, and let's say our color is red if I do t.beginFill color, and then after I've filled in, uh, after I've drawn my shape, I do t.endFill, then I should be able to, uh, so if I say t.color, and I set the color to uh, red, then I should be able to fill this square in with red. So what if we wanted to do something, uh, so what? If, so at the minute we're drawing it, what if we wanted to just make it appear? So I could do something like t.tracer00. Zero, zero. And what this will do is it will actually remove the tracing and just draw the square. And now I want to do uh, t.hide turtle and that's gonna hide the arrow. So we know the arrow is still there, but we can't see it anymore. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add in an option to, so if you think about a pen on a piece of paper, when we're moving it around, we're drawing. If we pick that pen up, then we can stop drawing 
and then we can go to a particular location and the location we're going to go to is so it works with a coordinate grid so if we say minus 100 we'll move it to the left and if we say minus 100 for the y then it'll move it up so minus 100 on the x minus 100 on the y should move this to the left and up on the screen and then before we start drawing our square we're going to say t.pen down and now you can see we've moved um, this sorry to the left and down so if I wanted to move it up we'll change our y-axis to positive and we can now draw it up if we want to move it further we can make this number bigger so that should move it to the top left of the screen if I wanted to move it to the right I go positive on the x-axis if I want to move it down I go negative on the y-axis now we have a way of moving our square around and what we're going to do now is we're going to take all of this code and we're going to bundle it together and we're going to say this is our definition for drawing a square and our square is going to take an x a y and a color and we're going to replace um and we're going to say yeah we'll do that for now we're going to take this color here and we're going to replace this string with the color that we pass in and we're going to pass in an x and a y to this go to function um, and when I run this nothing's going to happen because I haven't called the function to draw a square so let's do that now so let's say draw a square at location minus 100 uh, 0 with the color yellow okay and now we can draw multiple squares so if I say 200 and 100 and we make this one blue and there we go so we've got a way of drawing multiple squares now but what if we do something like this what if we say x equals 0 and then we say while true we want to draw a square at x 0 with the color of red um, and let's actually pass a size in for this as well so let's say size and then when we're going forward when we're actually doing the drawing of the square we're going to say size instead and let's pass that in as 20 and if we run this now ended up with it breaking because we've got a infinite loop uh, we've got this t.clear uh, and we need to do a t.clear t.update and then we're also just going to slow this down a bit by saying from time in part sleep and every time we run this we're going to just say sleep for um, a 60th of a second and there we go we've now got a square so that explains the basics of how we can create a shape create a renderer for a shape uh, move that shape around and then we've got this simple little loop here which every single time it runs clears our canvas draws a square with this position x once it's drawn it we add one to x so every time this loop runs we move our square one pixel to the right okay and there we go so let's make this uh, a little bit more complicated so if we go to github.com slash the Billington slash t physics that's where you can find my t physics library and if you click on this t physics.py file and we go to raw we can copy all of this and we're just going to create a new file and we're going to save this as t physics.py we're going to paste all that code in and now on this side on the game side instead of creating our own rendering and creating our own square we can say from t physics import game and rectangle and we're going to create a new game and we're going to say uh, create a new game and I can't remember how to do that name width height and color so we're going to create a new game called uh, my game 
we're going to give it a width and a height of 600 600 and then we're going to give it a color of uh, light gray so it's going to have a light gray background we're now going to say uh, let's create a player and this player is going to be a rectangle um, and we pass in an x um, x y width height and color so let's go with blue and then once we've created our player we need to add it as a shape to our game and that's going to mean that when our game updates it will include the position of that player and now we just need a loop and every time the, the loop runs we're going to say game.update okay and in this loop we're going to check if game dot is pressed and we press the up key then I want to take the player's Y location and we want to add one to it uh, five positional arguments uh, but six were given oh yes we have to set the color um, rectangle and when we initialize a rectangle we pass x y width and height and then we've got the color I believe fill color there we go so now we want to set the fill color of our rectangle and we can set this to light blue and if we run this uh, sorry that's the wrong syntax so we're going to assign a value of light blue to our fill color variable uh, is pressed needs to be is pressed I'm not doing a right good job of this um, is pressed without the there we go and now if I press the up key our player moves up okay and if we want we can change the background color so let's change this to orange and there we go now we just need to add in a bit more code so if game uh, down is pressed then we're going to reduce the y-axis uh, if right is pressed we're going to increase the x-axis if left is pressed we're going to reduce the x-axis so up is pressed add to the y if down is pressed take from the y if right is pressed add to the x if left is pressed take from the x and if we run this we can see I've got a player and let's make him a little bit thicker so let's say his width is going to be 30 instead of 20 and now we're going to also create an enemy. We're going to say enemy equals a new rectangle. And we're going to have them start at uh, minus 200, 200. So we're going to have them start in the top left corner. And we're going to make them 20 by 20. So pretty small. And now we're going to say the fill color of the enemy should be probably red because they're an enemy. And we need to add the enemy to the game as a shape. So now when we run the game, we've got an enemy. But currently the enemy doesn't do anything. And the way we're going to get the enemy to do stuff is by chasing the player. So we're going to say if enemy.x is less than the player.x, aka if the enemy is on the left hand side of the player, move them to the right. So enemy.x plus equals uh one if enemy dot x is greater than player dot x and we're gonna add an elif here and so that this will only happen if the previous statement wasn't true then we're gonna say enemy dot x minus equals one so if the enemy is on the right hand side of the player then we want to move the enemy to the left and then we're also gonna recreate this for 
the y. So we can say if the enemy's y is less than the player's y, then take from the y. So aka if the enemy is above the player, move them down. And if the enemy is below the player, move them up. If we run this now, we can see that wherever we go, the enemy chases us. However, there's two issues. Firstly, and in fact, I've got those checks wrong because if that's less than then it should be a plus so we can see now wherever the enemy goes wherever the player goes the enemy follows but they've got the same speed so why don't we give the player a speed of four so we're going to say player speed equals four we're going to change all of these to the player speed and we're going to say enemy speed equals three we're going to change all of these to the enemy speed. Okay, and actually let's change these a bit more. Let's make it six and seven and five. Why not? Now we can see that it's running a little bit quick. But yeah, that, that's pretty good. I like that. So we're getting chased. Now the only issue here is... Uh, we've got a problem which is nothing happens when they collide so now we'll say if enemy dot collide with the player if the enemy hits the player then we want to set the enemy dot uh, x equal to its original position which will be minus 200 200 And we want to set the player position equal to zero, zero. And then we can see how long we survive for. Okay. Uh, now there's something a little bit boring here. So let's, let's reduce these down a bit. Let's go five, three instead. So there's something a bit boring here, which is the enemy always spawns in the same location so instead of that we're going to from random import rand int which will generate a random number from us and when we create it we're going to select a random integer between minus 300 and 300 for the x and a random integer between minus 300 300 for the y similarly when we have a collision we're going to generate a random location and now it's much more fun because we've got no idea whereabouts this enemy is going to spawn. And finally, let's add one more shape. So we're going to call this goal. It's going to be a rectangle. Um, and it's going to spawn in at a random location similar to the enemy. In fact, let's make it the same as the enemy in all ways apart from... Let's have it slightly smaller and let's give it a fill color of gold or silver. I could try and stand out a bit and then we're going to add it to the game. So we're going to say game to add goal. And there we go. Our goal is there. As you can see, it currently doesn't do anything. So to get it to do something, we're going to say if player dot collides with the goal then we want to increase the score and we're going to say score starts as zero and every time the player dies we want to print the score and set it back to zero we'll say you scored And if the player collides with the goal, we want to score, and we also want to move the goal. So we're going to say goal.x equals a random integer, and goal.y equals a random integer. And now, um, this should be a format, sorry. So we're going to format the score into this string, so we'll say you scored this. And we can see, I keep getting you scored zero, 
but if I start actually playing the game, so my score is three, and there you go, I got a three in the bottom left, got a one there, got a it's actually much harder than it looks. I got a 14 on that one. And I've noticed that the goal is a bit squiggly and that's because I think because I've given it uh, non-even width and height. So if we do that, I'm hoping it should look a bit more normal. And yeah, there we go. Um, and finally, let's change the player color from light blue to blue. And there you go. We've managed to build our, uh, our first basic game. So different things we could do now is we could maybe add more enemies if the score reaches a certain point um, you know maybe the player can have other power-ups which make it faster or something like that um, you know you could also use this to build uh, a basic platformer I've had students uh, use this library to build things like Flappy Birds before um, you know if Flappy Bird was just a, a rectangle um, and you just had some big pipes I mean you, you could build Mario with it um, the big thing here is uh, we're abstracting, uh, which means we're drawing away from the like an actual perception of a real game, and we're just making something that uses shapes. And I got a pretty good score of 24 there. But yeah, so there's a quick introduction to T physics and the sorts of stuff you can do with it. It's great to use in the classroom. It doesn't have, as you can see, the only thing you need to do uh, to get this running is download this file and store it in the same folder as where your game project is. There's no need to like install any outside libraries because it's just using all built-in libraries here. Okay, so the T physics library itself only uses built-in Python libraries, so you should be fine to use it. Yep, there you go. Um, let me know how you get on, and I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments. Thank you.